the Dallas Cowboys win in week two? All that more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every Locked day. On. Locked On. Locked, Locked On. Welcome back to the Lockdown Cowboys podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players if they score more or less in their Prize Pick projections. You can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That is prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. He is Landon McCool. Check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, how about them Cowboys? How about them Cowboys indeed, as the man said? Uh, unbelievable, man. Un- I mean, look. Yeah, we talked about it. We didn't have a high level of confidence going to this game. Neither of us picked the Cowboys to win. You never picked the Cowboys to win, as as per tradition. Yeah. Uh, but but I, but I, you know, even I felt like this was a tall order for the Cowboys. I mean, they 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 looked disjointed last year with their uh, last week with their starting quarterback coming in. Uh, I felt like in order to win this game, they needed to come in and play fantastic defense uh, and be able to uh, to run the ball to control the clock a little bit and open things up to allow passing lanes for Cooper Rush and. You know what? Lo and behold, they did it, man. I mean, they they managed to play fantastic defense through, you know, three and three qu- half quarters, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, and, I think it's really well regardless, but we'll, we'll yeah, get into that. Yeah. Absolutely, but but I I think well above expectation, or at least what we requested of them in order to win the game. Uh, and Cooper Rush again, like he did in the Minnesota game, look, looked str- struggled at times, but made just enough plays at the quarterback position to keep us in the game uh, without you know turning the ball over a lot. So. Uh, I mean, they played the formula to to a T, Marcus. I, don't, I really don't know what else to say about it. Uh, we're going to talk about each side of the ball and how they performed here in, in week two. But let's big picture this real quick. Yeah. To get that win against a team that you know was desperate to come in and get a win after they played so poorly last week. And we were talking about like, I, listen, I remember like two weeks ago, we were talking about, hey, if the Cowboys can just get out of this first two stretch at one on one with Dak Prescott, we would be happy. You know, if you think, hey, these are two playoff teams, probably Super Bowl contenders, just find a way to get to one on one. And the fact that you did it with Cooper Rush, uh, very impressive. It maybe it makes it feel like the season's not completely lost yet. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if the Cowboys can perform like that, I mean, like even on offense, look, I mean, it, it, it was disjointed at times and it felt like as the game was going on, the wheels were falling off a little well, bit. Well, the Bengals were but, getting a better beat on what Cooper absolutely. Rush was going to do, right? And, and But by the end of the game, when they needed it, Cooper was able to produce the plays that were required. And, and I think that that bodes well for, you know, look, the schedule gets a lot easier or not a lot easier, but certainly easier than easier. these first two games going forward. And if you can perform at that level – uh, with against the that you did against the Bengals with with your backup quarterback and, and, and everyone else playing the way they did, I, you've got a chance at all these games. I mean, I, maybe not the Rams game as much, but I, I mean, look, the Rams haven't been playing flawlessly. No. They, they almost let Atlanta come back in, in from a twenty eight to three game, which would have been something else, man. We that would have been a hell of a story to talk about. Yeah, yeah. But but I, I look, I, I think now I don't know that we're I'm ready to go out here and uh, you know readjust expectations. Uh, but I think it's a lot easier to look Cowboys fans in the eyes and say, hey, there's something to watch for this week. I mean, they, they may pull this one out. Yeah, and we we talked about this again, even with Dak. Like, just get through the first four weeks of the yeah. season at two and two and give yourself a chance. And now with games, oh, well, they get they play the Giants next week in New York and then they play Washington. I don't feel like those games are – I don't know if the Cowboys would be favored. They probably won't be, but they're certainly not ones where you're just checking off a, a loss already, right? Like this yeah. win, not only does it keep you alive as much as you can still be alive in week two, but you got to think the Cowboys at least have a little bit of confidence. Like, hey, we're not we're not going to just lay down because Dak is gone for a month. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think the Cowboys, with the way they are currently, you know, constructed with the backup quarterback, 
I think they're comparable to the teams that that both the Giants and the the Commanders have sure. played these last two weeks. Uh, and 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 you know, the, I know the Giants are two and zero, but but I mean, certainly not only by the grace of their own play. So yeah. I, I think, you know, the Cowboys are certainly and, – and look, we would have circled Washington and, and New York as the games that the Cowboys uh, were hoping to steal some, even with the backup quarterback. You know, I think we talked about long-term, let's just get a couple wins in here, and I think we had those games circled. So uh, to get a, get a win here really kind of just gives you – even more confidence going into those games um, and a, a little bit more breathing room so that if you can't pick up one, both of those games, uh, you, you know, you, you feel like you at least got yeah. that Bengals game. And now, you know, that combined with the idea, and, and we, we'll talk about this, I'm sure a lot this week uh, that maybe Dak could come back a little bit earlier than, 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 than to anticipate, even if it's just a week earlier, that, that could make a huge difference for this team. Yeah, and I don't think Cooper Rush playing well is going to slow down the Dak Prescott timeline. Like as soon as Dak can play, I think he's going to play. So and I, Jerry Jones after the game even made that comment: as soon as Dak is ready to play, he's going to play. They're not going to be, <laughs> they're not going to be patient there because they know they need him ultimately to win. All right, we've got so many things we want to break down uh, about this game, but before we do that, we want to tell you about Prize Picks. How does Prize Pick works? All you have to do is pick two to five players. If they score more or less in their prize pick projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Prize picks offers projection on just about any sport that you watch. That includes NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Plus, they are currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the Prize Pick app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up today to play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, they'll give you $50. Don't forget to use uh, promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right. We normally start with the offense here, but I don't want to do that. I, I want to talk about the defense because no. I-, I thought they were outstanding. Even at the end of the game, when they were struggling to get off the field a little bit, they, they were still fantastic. Let me, let me read you the, yeah. the drives that the defense had in the first half. Nine plays, 50 yards, field goal. Okay. Three plays, six yards, punt. Nine plays, 43 yards, punt. Five plays, six yards, punt. One play, end of half. Uh, 11 play, 43-yard drive that that went to a field goal because the special teams jumped off sides. Field goal, punt, punt. Like, that's how it was for the first three quarters of this game. They were phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, just absolutely brutalizing Burrow. I mean, just, uh, you know, I think something like, did they have five sacks in the first half, maybe? Like, it was... It was ridiculous, and 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 when even when they weren't sacking Burrow, and and there were times when, there were at least two or three times when Burrow was able to sneak out of the front of the pocket, and like the only offense they were able to kind of gain was off Burrow scrambles combined with penalties for late hits yeah. on on Burrow after his scrambles. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean the Cowboys' deep pass rush basically completely. Sh- Look, we talked about it before the game all week that that Burrow was going to give you opportunities to sack the quarterback. You know, that's just kind of the mm-hmm. way he plays his game. I mean, I, I don't know that I would have anticipated this level of of, of kind of fe- feeding, feeding frenzy, but early on, the Cowboys pass rush could do whatever they wanted. Micah Parsons was just straight embarrassing. Leo Collins half the half the game, uh, and, and 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 then everybody else was getting in into the the, the mix too. You saw uh, Dorrance Armstrong get there. The interior pass rush was was providing pressure. Leighton mm-hmm. Vanderesh got a nice cleanup sack at one point. So I just think that. You know, early on and for most of the game, it, it all started up front with an, uh, just a ferocious pass rush. Everybody was getting home. But again, I think the headliner obviously has to be Micah Parsons, yeah. who was just basically generating opportunities for everybody on that defensive line. I said this before the season started. If the Cowboys want to have a chance to, to accomplish their goals this year, they need Micah Parsons to be a generational type of player through two games. We're there, Landon. Yeah, I mean, we're absolutely. Like he's at the point now where, if if a team leaves him one on one to be blocked, it's almost a shock if he doesn't get a pressure, right? Yeah. Like, and when you're at that point of your career, 
I mean, I, I don't even know if I have the words to describe. It's that rare. Yeah, I mean, we haven't really seen anything like this in a long time. I mean, I mean, I hate to be like this, but I mean, even when Demarcus Ware was around and I mean, he was young, I mean, I was covering the team then, and it was it was impressive. But it, I don't know, man. Like he he's all, came onto the field and since since he became a pass rusher, like week two of last year or week three, he has been one of the most terrifying pressure players in all of football. Um, and it doesn't seem to be slowing down any. I mean, we saw him getting triple teamed and still getting a pressure. So, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we've run out of kind of hyperbole and, and, and uh, things to say about Micah Parsons, but I mean, just absolutely. And, and I think this is the kind of last step to being to greatness, right. Is not only creating for yourself, but creating for your friends. Oh yeah. Right? Now, now the fact that everybody else is eating off of Micah's plate at this point, the, the Van um, shack is a perfect example yep, of that, right? Like exactly. you mentioned it, like he was able to, to force Burrow to step up in the pocket and Van Rush made the sack. Um, I do want to talk about one play in this game that I, I've got a feeling is going to go under the radar just because there's so many great plays from Parsons and Dante Fowler. The tackle that Trevon like Diggs Donald, had oh, okay, yeah. at, the, at, at the end of the game, when yeah. it's what, was it third and three, I believe. Yeah, it's, right. it's third and three, and Burrow throws a little route to Boyd on the outside. Boyd's fantastic after the catch, so tough. And Diggs, who's not known for being a great tackler, brings him down for a one-yard gain. The Cowboys are able to force the Bengals to punt. I, I felt like that was the, the momentum switcher. When Diggs made that tackle, you just felt like, you know, they might actually be able to steal this game. And the play before that, let, let's the play before that, he yeah. made a tackle for to, to stop Nick uh, Nixon from getting anywhere um, on a on just a dump off. He was the only guy on that side, just made a really nice low tackle, and then to come back and then make that play on the out route to Higgins and 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 I'm not, it was Boyd. I'm sorry, Boyd. Boyd. Uh, yep. and, and and to stop him short of the fourth down, that was huge. I thought that you know, despite having a couple, uh, the guy that I thought you were going to mention. Uh, Donovan Wilson also had a very big yep. uh, uh, tackle. He had he had a one or play one or two plays where he missed a tackle and one that he was called for a penalty. But he but he was all over the field. I thought he was worth mentioning as well. But yes, I mean I guess one thing that has been shocking. I mean not shocking, but I guess you know something that I antis- didn't anticipate being so good. Uh, really, for most defenses, is, is the tackling has been the really good. Been very good. Like, I mean we haven't considering- had to talk about it at all yet. And that's crazy because we're we're still playing September football and didn't play yeah. a lot of preseason. So, uh, you know, there's not enough kudos to go around for all the play yeah. that the defense had. Diggs, had, I thought, had a good. He was just real quick about Diggs. He really bounced back in those in those two uh, plays in that series because the previous series, you know, he was pissed about the way that that all went down. He felt like he got pushed off on, but I think he was. He, by had, he, had the, he had the fourth down play where they threw the the slant to Chase. Where I mean, he had his he had he his had hands it. on the ball and Chase just made an incredible grab. Yeah, I think you're right. And then, and then Higgins pushed off, and I felt like he felt like, and I think he, I think he, he did. But it was close enough that, that I think they just wanted to let it. You're go. not going to get that call, you know. No, like, you're not just, in that I mean, sense, and, yeah. and honestly, listen, <laughs> I, I'm the, I'm the ref guy. Brad Allen is is number one on my hit list. I hate the, I hate those guys. That that crew. I thought they called the game extremely well by allowing a lot of that stuff to kind of go, and even picking up the the call on Leighton Vander Esch. I thought that was some decent ref. So when I crack them, I'll I'll let you know when they when they do well. I'll let you know too. They let them play tonight, and I think that was really really key. Yeah, I mean, you you kind of quickly mentioned Dante Fowler in this game. I thought he oh, was man. really good. Yeah. Uh, between creating pressure, he had a pass deflection on a third down. Yep. A TFL too. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, he was good in this game, and the Cowboys. Go ahead. What a luxury. What a luxury. I was just going to say, and I think that's ultimately the story of this game. What a luxury it is to have like uh, Fowler as your third pass rusher. The Cowboys were able to just send waves of these guys. Sam Williams also got a tackle for loss mm-hmm. and made a couple plays. The Cowboys defensive ends are just on point right now. And obviously the Bengals offensive line has struggled. That's part of it as well. But I, I think the Cowboys defensive line has showed and proved to themselves, you know, in a large way that they can be the generator of a lot of the positive things that happen on this defense. Yeah, I mean, very initial grades right now, but it seems like Micah Parsons and Dante Fowler had the same win rate in this game, which tells you something, right? Like, Parsons is getting the pub because he deserves it, and he was amazing, but that's how good Dante Fowler was in this game. And they needed him, too, right? Like, if teams are going to put double teams on Parsons, they need that other edge rusher to win, and Fowler did at a pretty high level. Uh, Just one other player, just kind of really quickly, 
I thought Anthony Barr played a pretty good game yeah. outside of the, the penalty, penalty that he had early in the game. I thought he was he was pretty good. Yeah, bounced back, had a nice T, uh, TFL for for uh, at, a, at one point, and then was just was solid and where he needed to be at certain points. I'm, I'm a little concerned about uh, Leighton Vander Esch because I felt like at one point he was dealing with a little bit of a shoulder, so I'm interested to see if they mention anything uh, tomorrow or about I, that. I think he's going to be okay. He was he led uh, all front seven guys in snaps in this game, so I think I, I saw him go back out there. He should be all right. Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, I thought that Barr, uh, you know, he, he's going to play a role, and I think that he's played that role really well, and, and, and if he can kind of keep that kind of roll up uh then then you know again the defense look the defense I, I was, two, I, played I was two weeks without many, 20 points yeah know? i was shocked at how many snaps he played 60 That's uh, when the lot. cowboys yeah. signed him and i remember when we had on uh, luke braun from lockdown vikings we were thinking you know 25 30 snaps a game if he's giving you 60 snaps and playing that well i mean we'll see it the cowboys aren't in any rush obviously to bring jabril cox or you know cox off the inactive list Last thing on that too, I, I was just going to say, I wonder if maybe the way that they're trying to divide up the the kind of division of labor at linebacker is they want to give Cox a couple of more extra weeks to get a healthy and be comfortable in the defense. Sure, and possible. so they load bar up uh, early and then they, you know, start yeah, rotating back. car and la- uh, yeah, Cox later into the season. Such a defense. Absolutely phenomenal in this game. I, I know people are probably upset about, you know, the, the fourth quarter stuff, but, you held the Bengals to 254 yards against an offense that was really good at the end of the season. Um, they didn't get a turnover, right? Which is yeah. what we said last year. Like, we, we've been saying this this offseason. Like, turnover regression is going to happen. The Cowboys have one turnover on defense through two games. But if you can be better at not giving up big plays and you can hold teams to 3.8 yards per passing attempt, which they did today – it might actually be a net positive for your defense, even though you're not getting those quick scores. Their defense today, absolutely outstanding. Absolutely. I, I mean, against a, 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 guy, a quarterback and wide receiver combo that may be one of the best in the league and that were, was in the Super Bowl last year. So, again, endless kudos to Dan Quinn and this defense. Yep. All right, let's talk about the, the Cowboys offense in this game, and specifically Cooper Rush. But before we do that, I want to tell you about Turo. Turo is the world's largest car-sharing marketplace with Turo, you can book any car that you want for just about any occasion or budget across the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. Book a spacious SUV or a minivan for a family road trip. Get a classic or luxury car for a special event, birthday, or holiday. Find affordable economy cars if you're on a budget and you just need to get from A to B. Test drive that new electric vehicle that you've had your eye on for a while. Many, many Turo hosts can even deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Ditch boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. All right, let's talk about the Cowboys' offense, Lane. And they started this game out with back-to-back 75-yard touchdown drives. Uh, They stalled out a little bit, but got to give credit to Cooper Rush. What a performance by him. Absolutely. I mean, just, you know... just poised, you know, just like he just wasn't ever got, never got rattled. Um, you know, there were times when he didn't uh, execute it the perfect way that you wanted him to, or, or maybe even the way that Dak would, but I, I felt like he never, it never looked like it was too big for him. He never looked like he wasn't completely in command of at least what he was supposed to be doing. Um, you know, I think they, did, and I, come on, we got to give serious kudos to Kellen Moore. I oh, thought he, yeah. he called oh, yeah. a brilliant game for the offense that was out there. And, and provided opportunity, got guys open, uh, you know, just kind of cut back a little bit on some of the gadgetry stuff. We actually thought that there would be more kind of gadgetry stuff. And, and I think what they did instead was just kind of simplify the game and use misdirection more. Lots of motion still, lots of, you know, uh, uh, kind of de- predetermined looks where they were getting ideas of what the, the defense was going to be and then getting the ball to the right guy. A good mix, I thought, of Zeke and, and Pollard in the game. I think Pollard ended up with like four – I mean, it was almost a 50-50 split on touches. So uh, I thought that – That's fine. Go ahead. I know. You're, no touches for Zeke is going to make no, you no, happy it's ever. Not true. I, they, it was just pretty clear in the second half this wasn't a Zeke game. Um, but I not, but that's not them. how that works, though. I mean, they're just not – they're not playing the hot hand because they – that's just not how they, they do that. I know. It's know? too bad, though, because you could see that – the Bengals have a very big and physical defense, right? And like, I don't think that's the type of game that's great for Zeke anymore. 
I think getting like somebody like Pollard in the open field, like we saw in his big reception, that's how you beat the Bengals defense. But it ended up not mattering. They, they, they were fine. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. I thought that it was called correctly. The results may not have always been what we wanted, but I thought it was called correctly. There was some stuff like I felt like I would really like to know what that second down check that 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 rush had that was on that like really critical drive. I think it was in the third quarter uh, where where it felt like the Cowboys needed to score, and, and he ch- I felt like he checked out of a pass into a run to Zeke, which didn't seem yeah. well advised. But I thought overall they they. Un, you know, this is the benefit of knowing your your backup quarterback, and like you know, maybe why you keep Cooper Rush over uh, you know you, anybody else is because, yeah, he doesn't have like the same kind of flash or 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 um, you know a lot of the times with these backup quarterbacks like Greer for for instance, like it's real up and down, right? Like there's it's it's just a wild variance, and and with Cooper Rush, like you know what you're gonna getting, so if you can get your guys into positions to make plays on the other end. Uh, uh, then it, it can yeah. it can benefit you. For the Cowboys, it was weird because that guy this game was Noah Brown. I mean, honestly, like Noah Brown going five for five with with ninety plus yards and a touchdown. I mean, that's really what they needed. They needed the opportunity to be taken advantage of by another wide receiver because obviously there's going to be a lot of t- attention being played paid to CD Lamb. Uh, and and we talked about it right, like. Brown's opportunities with the second team gave him chemistry with, with mm-hmm. Cooper rush. And it, it had, it, it's very similar to last year we talked about, right. With Cedric Wilson. So um, I think that the, the Cowboys were able to run an offense that Cooper rush was comfortable operating in. They didn't put him out of position. They didn't make him do too much. There were very few third and long plays that were generated by Stupid penalties. It came. It happened. Oh, they, they happened. Yeah, yeah. But but I think for the for the most part, the Cowboys were able to stay ahead of schedule uh, and stay ahead of the chains, and, and that provided an opportunity for Cooper Rush to just go out there and play football and not have to be a hero. And ultimately, it ended up making him look like a hero. Yeah, I, to me, the the biggest story of the game. We could talk about Cooper Rush, but it's the offensive line. Like I yeah. think the Bengals thought if they blitzed the linebacker or they blitzed the safety that they were going to be able to get to the Cowboys and Cooper rush and panic and dump the ball underneath. What ended up happening though, is the Cowboys were picking up all these blitzes and that meant that receivers across the middle of the field, mostly on dig routes were open and he was hitting them. Whether it was Noah Brown, whether it was CD lamb or uh, Dalton Schultz, or, I mean, those are all the guys that caught passes, basically. I think Dalton it, Schultz got, yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you, you named all of them, yeah, yeah. But like, they were able to hold up long enough so the guys could get into the routes yep. and he could make the throws, and that was enough. I, there was obviously things the Cowboys could have done better on offense. Not fumbling the ball when you're inside the 30 yard line is a big one. Not getting pre snap penalties, but for the most part, if you tell me that the Cowboys are going to score 20 points and they're going to ha- hold the ball quite a bit and they're not going to have big turnovers you can win a lot of games playing that style of football at least in the regular season if your defense keeps allowing you know stopping teams from scoring 20 plus points in the game yeah if you you know you we this offense can generate 20 points i think so uh i mean at, at, at times so uh I, it gives you opportunity to win some of these games you know and, and, you know and the I, other thing is if i would have told you going into this game that the cowboys were going to be minus one in the turnover department and they were going to yeah. win you would never have believed it, right? Because no. we, yeah. we talked about this on Friday. Like the, the, the game plan for the Dallas Cowboys with Cooper Rush at quarterback for the next four to six weeks is you're going to have to be plus one, plus two, plus three in that turnover department to win these games. You just won a game where you were minus one. It's a pretty good sign that you have a, a very talented team despite Dak Prescott being out. Yeah. And I think that that's the thing, right? Like there, we talk about paths to victory all the time, right? And, and, the Cowboys pass the victory with this lineup. We felt like was that the defense had to play fantastic, and, and to to me that meant turnovers too. You know that inclu- included they got to get a couple turnovers. The fact that they were able to do so without turnovers, uh, that you know that that bodes well for for the Cowboys moving forward. I mean, I don't think that we they'll play the next three games without getting a single turnover on defense. So uh, I, I'm hoping that the Cowboys can find a way to, 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 you know, really turn it around against some of these teams that, you know, we weren't exactly sure how they were going to play against. Uh, I've got one more thing I want to talk about before we head out, but anything else on the offense of the team in general? Just, you know, I mean, night and day efficiency and, and execution uh, uh, versus last week, everybody, I think took it upon themselves to know that they had a backup quarterback in 
They put their nose down to the ground, grindstone. There were some pre-snap penalties. There was some stuff there. But I thought for the most part, execution-wise, everything was on point. People, no, you know, guys like Noah Brown and, and, and T.D. Lamb, they were making plays for their quarterback, sure. not not just uh, having to wait for the quarterback to make plays for them, which was – that that's key. If you're going to play this kind of low-scoring 20-17 to 17 type of ball game every week, you need to have a kicker that – you can trust and make and make big time kicks. Brett Maher making a 54 yard field goal earlier in the game, and then a 50 yard field goal to win the game with no time left. It's huge. It's huge because there's there's absolutely a world where that ball just goes a little bit more to his right, and they they lose that game in overtime. But to make that kick the way he did, huge, absolutely huge. Yeah, that's why that digs tackle was so huge because it really just felt like the Cowboys offense was deflating in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm. And to get that one opportunity to say, okay, guys, look, we're probably not going to win this if we stretch this out into into overtime, get one chance to get down there. And and another play that we need to point out, now we're talking about special teams, uh, Turpin getting those 15 yards on that punt return. It seemed like a small thing, but when you needed 25 yards to get into field goal range, you know, or 35 yards, I think total to get started the drive at the 35 rather than the 25. It's a big deal. It's a huge, you got an extra first down. You got an extra first down thanks to Turpin's return. So again, it's the small things like that, that are really going to matter for the Cowboys in these upcoming weeks. If they can continue to win the small ball game, uh, then you can overcome losing a back, uh, losing your quarterback and, and and losing the turnover game somehow. Dallas Cowboys are one and one after two weeks. They've got a big game against the Giants, the two and zero Giants. Seems <laughs> crazy. Uh, uh, on Monday Night Football should be a lot of fun, Landon. We're gonna have all week to break it down and prepare for that game. Uh, should be a lot of fun, but enjoy a victory Monday. You never know how many you're gonna get. This one at least feels very meaningful. We, we, we get to enjoy football this week. Later. This is this is fun. Unexpected victory Mondays are fantastic. Yes. I mean, this is great. Like this is, and it's been a long time for us too. So, especially after last week, remember how you felt about last week. Think about how precious these yes. wins are and enjoy it. Yes, I'm absolutely enjoying this win. It's actually nice that they they don't play it on Monday. We get another extra day to, to really soak it in. But that's right. That is it for today's show. Thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every day. Now make your second listen to Locked On uh, NFL Show with Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Ma- Matt Williamson as they give you the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Follow our podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Also on YouTube. Follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm sure he's going to have some fire tweets this week. Fire um, takes. Yeah, some fire takes. Should be, should be a lot of fun. But I am at Marcus underscore Mosher. Enjoy your victory Monday. We'll see you guys next time.